In this video, we'll optimize the response of the motor with the tuning less function in Sigma Win Plus version 7. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. I'll explain some detail about the tuning less function, and then we'll implement some of the basic adjustments. I'll also explain some of the advanced adjustments that can help in special circumstances. So please follow along as I show you how to get more out of tuningless. Remember that the tuningless control method is our first stop toward achieving acceptable response from the servo. It is stable, adaptive, and gives identical response for loads up to 30 to 1 inertia ratio. As you'll see, just a few adjustments can improve the response even more. Here's how it works. Using a proprietary algorithm, TuningLess adjusts the servo control loops internally. It does not set any parameters. In fact, the standard tuning parameters have absolutely no effect when TuningLess is on. For more details, you can go into Chapter 8.4, the TuningLess function, and you see that uh, your normal speed loop gain, integral time constant, position loop gain, moment of inertia, all these standard tuning parameters are completely disabled. By default, a tuning list is on. It can be used any time there's a changing load inertia, or if the load is not changing, it can also be used. It can be used on any type of machine, and it applies to both speed mode, and as in the case of the IEC controller, position mode. Basic usage, you can try to get better performance by turning up what's called the level. We'll show you how to get to that here in a minute. If you hear resonance or noise that is not automatically filtered out, you can also just turn down the rigidity level and the response still may be acceptable for your application. If you need better response, you can apply a feed forward parameter. And there's a few other configuration options that we'll show you here too. For this training, let's keep it simple and apply the most basic adjustments that seem to have the greatest impact on the response of tuning less, and that is feed forward and rigidity level. I'm connected here to the demo, and I'm online connected to the X and Y axis on the SGD7W. I've got the parameters open, and I've selected here PN109 feed forward because we'll be using that. And we need to start the program jog move. So from the menu, I'll go to program jog. OK, and run. Servo on. Execute, yes. This is the same program jog move we've had before. And you're also going to need to have up the trace feature. Let's bring up the trace. And I think I will set it up for positioning from the start. It's set. And I'll go back to 625 milliseconds. Just bring up that graph again. Okay, there it is. And let's see what happens now when we change the value of PN109. And I'll start in the middle here at uh, 50%. Enter and write that edited parameter. Let's see what that does to our graph. One way to do a comparison is to click this overlapping button and we can compare the uh, current unsaved graph with what we have right now. This was our response right now with a little 50% feed forward. We simultaneously display what we had previously. You can see it made it more aggressive. The torque got a little higher. Looks like our settling time came down a little bit. So why don't we clear that out, and uh, let's see if we increase it a little bit more. Let's try maybe 75%. And graph it again. 
And now I see that my settling time has come down somewhat even more. Although I'm starting to get this little oscillation in the torque signal. That might be of concern. And we might go so far as even to try 100%. That's the maximum. And here's what I have with 100%. So it looks like the response is improving somewhat. Now the other adjustment was the rigidity level. Let me pull up the menu, and here in the software it's called response level, it's the same thing. So we might get better response if we increase this response level. However, if it's too high, you will get some noise. So this is where uh, you'll want to be sure that in your video you have the uh, audio on here. And then once you have this as high as it can manage, you can click completed. And let's see how good we're doing now with uh, maximum feed forward and maximum rigidity. And you see now, I think we have a lot better response. We've got a settling time of 90 milliseconds. And we even have the coin signal is going low during the move, meaning that the position error is relatively low even during the move. So it's now just a matter of finding the right balance. If you're satisfied with this, you could leave it, or you could try to reduce the feed forward or reduce the response level, rigidity level. So let me just confirm here this automatically measured settling time is, there's the end of the move. There's the coin signal, 90 milliseconds. And that's what we have here for the auto measurement, 90 milliseconds. I'm going to write that in here for our optimized tuningless position settling time. Got it down to 90 milliseconds. And what about that position error? To measure position error, I need to take another trace because this position error only goes up to 17,500 in my setup. I don't have checked the high precision trace. Yeah, a little more time here. And let's take that trace again. Okay, and start. And I think this is a better comparison graph versus what we had to start off with, with the same scale here for position error. You see the position error has come down quite a lot. If we were to measure the position error, I think I would zoom in a little bit even. Take my cursors on the horizontal, and I'll put the cursor A at the maximum, and cursor B at zero, or close to it. We're looking at channel three position error, and the difference is seven times 10 to the five reference units. I'll write that in here, seven times 10, five, pulses as our reference unit. And we're left now with a torque ripple to measure. Let me zoom in even closer on this torque reference. Looks like we do have some torque ripple now. It's gone up a little bit from 0.5% to now it's 1.2%. I'll write that in here. 1.2% percent rated. And from time to time you might even want to save a graph after you've done some work with tuning. I'm going to save this one. Maybe I'll just create a folder here called My Files. Save this data trace. I'll just leave the default date code for the name. If those two parameters just aren't giving you the response you need, and you still need the adaptive response of tuning less, you might want to look at some advanced adjustments. One of them is the load level. And load level is parameter 170. We've had it set here to level number one. 
but there is also a level zero for light loads and level two for heavier, higher inertia loads. Another one that's pretty advanced is called model following control. Model following control can be turned on in the PN140s. Model following control. We do not have it on right now. It's very important though that if you try to force on model following control that you set this inertia parameter 103 to 0 regardless of what your inertia really is in the system. Also when you use model following control then that feed forward parameter you set previously it has no effect. Instead you'll be setting the feed forward of the model following control algorithm using the model following control gain. You'd be increasing this value. And one reason that you might want to do this is if your machine requires vibration suppression. Because the vibration suppression filter is only available when you have model following enabled. That means currently we could not implement vibration suppression at the same time as the tuningless function with the parameters that we have right now. Of course this demo does not produce low frequency of vibration so we don't need that feature. But if you had a machine with a changing load and a constant frequency of vibration, then in this specific and special case, you may want to go through with these advanced adjustments. For most mechanical systems and actuators, you don't need to go through these advanced adjustments. And remember, if you don't have a changing load and those basic adjustments don't give you the response you need, it might be time to go on to auto-tuning instead of spending more time with the tuning less function. Because as I like to say, if you spend too much time adjusting tuning less, you will be tuning more. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Sigma 7, please go to yaskawa.com. Products. Sigma 7 Servo Products.